you people would choose to eat normally, but it's not higher than normal people eat. They go to all sorts of extremes to avoid fat. They will squeeze the butter out of their muffins in the morning so it runs down their arm. Um, we've even had a child who refused to feed her horse with a linseed oil cake because she was frightened that the fat was going to go through her skin and make her fat. We should be eating about 30% of our diet as fat. And I know a lot of you read how people should be on low-fat diets. Well, a low-fat diet in terms of the government and their health drive is 30% fat. That is a low-fat diet. We know that almost all people who are starving become depressed. So, not surprisingly, almost all the children who come here have some degree of depression. Do try and listen. It is important that you change the way you think. It was like this kind of thing in my head that was like controlling me. And I always described it like I was down a big black hole and I couldn't see the top. I just couldn't get there. <laughs> I limited myself to a certain amount and when it got to that stage I just wouldn't allow myself any more but it wasn't like I was scared or afraid, it was just <laughs> something telling me that I shouldn't. Throughout their stay they have to pass certain tasks before they can be discharged. Naomi is on the final phase of her programme and is packing to go home for a long weekend. Away from the strict control at Rhodes Farm, this poses a big challenge as she's previously fallen back into her old habits. It's just like at home where I used to do all these things and at Rhodes Farm I've never been able to get away with it and at home I did. So now it's like, oh, you're back in your old environment, just do what you used to do and stuff. Because here you know the rules of the rules and at home you, I now know the rules of the rules but it's still like difficult to come to terms with it. She must eat well and spend the whole weekend at home to pass. If she doesn't, her mum must bring her back to the clinic, but she's determined to make it work this time. The instinct of the mother is to love your child and protect them and look after them and make them happy. And the things that would make Naomi happy for me to do, you know, would kill her. So you, you can't let her do what she wants to do. You have to be strict and strong and tell her that she's got to do things that she really doesn't want to do, that she really hates. You have to go and put your pink jacket back on, right? It is difficult to... Um, they like to talk about it, when Naomi does especially. She likes to talk about her anorexia and she likes to go over the same questions all the while, asking if you love her and why do you love her and... I'm not sure she's not fat, and no matter what compliments you give her, she won't take them on board. She just, um, she doesn't want to hear anything nice about herself, because she doesn't believe it and she thinks she's lying to her. But after lunch, she's finding it tough. I feel really low at the moment. Um, I feel a bit like complete. Holy shit, I just feel really stupid and angry and confused and I, I'm going to do exercise today and I'm going to do dance for two hours and that will make me feel better. But, you know, I just, I feel like I never do enough. I don't know, I just, I'm angry because I'm eating and I just feel so guilty about it and nothing can take that guilt away. I mean, even if I exercise, it helps, but I still feel guilty because it's still there and I know that I haven't burnt it. I just feel I haven't burnt it all off and it just makes me feel, makes me feel really shit. It's crucial that she passes the weekend. If she doesn't, she'll have to stay even longer in the clinic. Later that day, her mum catches her exercising and stops her. Oh, I just can't, I just can't, 
just, I have to, it's just, gone, I hate it, why are people stopping me doing it, I have to finish it, I'm so angry, I'm so angry, I'm upset. Anorexia makes the sufferers go to all kinds of lengths to avoid eating and gaining weight. Once a week, the staff do a room search. <laughs> it does feel a bit mean that you're going through people's things, but we do, the girls do know that we will do random room searches. Teddy bears are a good place for hiding stuff. Have secret little passages. We've had all sorts stored in teddy bears before now. <laughs> Batteries. Batteries are used as weights. And we do. We put them in their pants. The girls aren't allowed anything that could be used to cheat their weight. Even cups or bottles are banned from their rooms, as another common trick is tanking, drinking water just before being weighed to artificially increase their weight. Oh, look, there's a bottle of water out there. A litre of water weighs exactly a kilo. So full of rubbish. Now, we know that a, glass, a bottle of water's already been taken out of this room this morning. The cleaners found it. It's so invariably untidy. And I'm not even a tidy person. I can't oh. bear it. It's so messy. There's vomit or something in here. There's a... Yeah. Uh, cereal and there's Spat money. Spat out cereal and money. There's a stone. Oh, look at that. Oh, wait. Oh, there we go. Chocolate Kit Kat. Oh, my God. Share that with a cup of tea. So that's been hidden in her pocket, not eaten. I'll put that with the bag. Oh. It's a bit like the bag lady, isn't it? Yeah. Razor blades. Oh. What have you found? Ooh, socks. <laughs> not, not socks. <laughs> <laughs> but they're wet, they're damp. So how long have they been in there? Damp with... I'm sick. Oh, no. But what we find in a bedroom is probably just, I don't know, a quarter of what's hidden somewhere else. The menu at Rhodes Farm is rotated on a three-weekly basis. Natasha's been doing really well, but tonight at supper there's been an unexpected change. They've got a homemade soup by Dee, and it hasn't gone down well. What's up, Natasha? Don't you like it? It's really nice. I like it I, it's not nice. It's, just, nice. it's just sweet potato. It's nothing awful in it. I'm mm -hmm. gonna get you like a cheese sandwich or something. For for hating that so much, you did so well eating it, Natasha. Yes, you did. You finished. More did you than see half me? Of it. Exactly. I didn't. You finished more than half of it in about ten minutes. I haven't had a good day. I couldn't eat the friggin' soup. It was minging. <laughs> Dee's really bad at making soup, actually, isn't she? The other one was nice. much worse, because that one tasted like curry. This was like a fine soup. It was just like such a big volume. I kind of get really sick of it, and by then I was like, oh. But um, But I didn't have that much of a problem with it. I'd just rather that they stick to the menu. Later that night, Naomi is returned early from her weekend at home. Her mum has brought her back because she wasn't following the Rhodes Farm rules. You can do it, come on. No, Naomi thinks there's calories in the water. Come on, Naomi, you can do it. On top of exercising, she's refused to drink water. I only like drink like this half pint glass at breakfast and that's all I drink through the day. <clears throat> and my mum was like, I'm gonna start saying that you're not drinking enough water. And I didn't think she'd actually send me back, so and she did. Wasting time, Naomi. I've told you. You must drink it. 
There's no getting away from it. I feel like when you're dehydrated that like you feel the pain and you feel that you've done something that you can still it. Like I could still mm -hmm. exercise even though I wasn't drinking and it just felt like it just feels like an achievement and then they make you drink it and you just don't know. I'm really angry and like just really frustrated that I d that the little bit of control that I thought I did have I haven't even got that. Twice a week, the staff meet to discuss the girl's progress and adjust their calorie intake. Despite being near the end of her stay, they're worried about Naomi's progress. Hi. Hi. Naomi, you have managed to fail just about every single weekend that you've been on, haven't you? And I think we've had a discussion, we've all come to the conclusion that you really like it here, that you don't want to go home. It just seems to us that, you, through what you're doing, you're saying to us that you don't want to go home and that you're happier here on the unit. Do you think that's a fair assumption? Are you... have we come to the right conclusion? Come on, it's important to say. Naomi, if you don't talk to us, it's really hard for us to understand what's going on in your... Head, I mean, because the next thing we're going to be thinking is, do you want to be staying here? Because that's what it looks like to us. We've got to make some long-term plans for you, and if you want to stay here... It's not what I want, though. It's just that I find it so hard, and it's not that I want to be here because I don't, and there's just mm. no point in me saying it because no one believes me anymore. Okay. <laughs> when I'm doing it, it's just because it's like, it's just going back to old routines. It's not that I'm thinking to go back here. But not drinking water, come on. You don't really believe that that you're adding any calories drinking water. I do. You really believe yes. that? You think there are calories in water? Oh, I thought this was just a something to upset everybody, so they'd no, send you it's back. Not. You think there are calories yes, in water? It's not that I'm doing it on purpose. Oh, to come how many to calories you. are there in water? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Have you looked in the calorie book? Does it tell you in the calorie book? I don't know, I don't really look in it, I haven't really looked in it. How about looking on the water bottle? How many, have you ever looked on a water bottle to see how many calories? I just don't believe it. I don't believe anyone anymore. Oh, I see, okay. What is there in water that would give you calories? Just anything, I don't like anything inside me. I just think of anything's inside me, I think it, it will do something to me. Like, put me in put on weight. Okay, well look, this weekend you're going to be grounded um, and we'll have to have a think about what happens next weekend but you are going to have to, to talk to one of us and make a very, very good case for going next weekend. You're going to have to give us assurances and really, really convince us. It's Saturday morning. Natasha's been at Rhodes Farm for nine weeks now and has done well enough to join her dad for her first meal out away from the unit. Yeah, we do. One of the hardest things about being at Rhodes Farm is not being able to see your parents, apart from once a week. That really is hell, because I've always been quite a daddy's girl. <laughs> She's always been a very happy-go-lucky sort of kid. So of course it came as a massive shock. <laughs> and most of the people I know and know, who know her said she was the last child that they would um, suspect. To, to suffer from um, from this uh, addiction. You look great. Whoa. It's, a, it's such a devious disease. It carries with it so, so much um, underhand behavior. It's disguised so well that um, it, 